become the place where God would use to feed Israelites because Joseph landed there. If Joseph didn't land there, let's say if Joseph landed in the Midianites, the story we would have heard today was God used Midianites to feed Israelites. You understand? So we cannot look at something and conclude that that was the will of God because it ended well. Because just because it ends well, does not mean that's how it was intended to. That just means that you are a product of grace and mercy. Hey kids! We decided it's your turn to go on an adventure. And we are going to be answering the big question. The question you need to answer is how do you grow up with God? Hey, Pastor Sarah, what you doing? Hi Zara. Hi. I'm, I'm reading my Bible. I've never seen anybody read the mm. Bible during the afternoon. Well, Zara, reading the Bible is really important. Do you know that the Bible is the love letter that God wrote for us to read? Hi, Fern. I'm teaching the kids at home about prayer. Oh, hi, kids. Prayer is awesome. Yeah, I was just telling the kids that if they go through a difficult time or if someone uh -huh. makes them hurt or sad, they can bear that and speak about that with God and he'll make them feel better. Hi, Victoria. Hi. Oh, it's so good that you're here. <laughs> we want to ask you, what does dancing have to do with worship? I would say that when I dance, it's instead of using words, I use my movements. I use my body to express to God how much I love Him. So I have a question, but I also have a mini testimony regarding what you taught last week. Uh, you said, learn, celebrate, and grow. So from what you shared, uh, before I used to look at my brothers at the beginning when I first came to church, I, I loved in one of us, and then I started looking at all the gifts and the anointings that all my brothers and sisters have, and I was always wishing, I wish I had that, and I, I wish I could have this, but I learned something last week, is also to celebrate what God has given, the, the gifts that we have, so the lack of self-confidence that I had in myself, even though it's a little, I learned to celebrate and put it in my life every day so that I can grow from it. So my question would be, how could I apply that every day where I could learn, celebrate, and then grow from what you taught? I think it's a very normal emotion when you see your brothers functioning in a certain grace, in a certain gift from the Lord. It is normal for you to want to do that. It is normal for you to say, hey, even I want, I want to do that. And then you look at yourself and you're like, am I doing something wrong? Why am I not functioning the way that he's functioning or doing the things the way? That is a very human feeling. Okay? Every time you look at somebody and hope and desire for something that they have in them, you are saying subconsciously what you, what you don't realize is that you are admitting that there is a lack in you. That you are not whole by yourself. That you need something from them in you to be complete. So maturity will always lead you to place where you know that I have to grow. I don't want to take it easy. But I also don't want to desire that somebody else, like some other brother, like some other sister. So you look at them and you appreciate them, but you say, but I know my calling is different. My gifting is different. So you have to push to the point where you are able to celebrate their gift without hurting you. Then you know you have reached maturity. Okay. When you do that, 
your gifting may not be like your brother but god will begin to amplify your gifting to have greater influence okay how do i give you a practical example i've said this long ago long ago uh in my church in bangalore we had so many anointed men of god there was one brother because he was the most talented among all the others but when it came to his speaking abilities people didn't find him very uh, exciting so he would come he would start talking and everybody's like can we have mr riot to come or the gear shifter to come you know he didn't he was not the most popular among the brothers but he was very intelligent very smart all the brothers needed his help so he would be the official chauffeur in the church everybody would would make him drive the car so he would be everybody's car. anybody needed to make a passport they would call him hey can you help us with the passport he knew everything he knew which embassy to call what number to call so he became their personal assistant so he is also anointed but he was more talented in his administrative skills so for the longest of time i saw how people looked down on him because he was not a firecracker people all love loud noise we like attention we like excitement and he was none of those so i watched how over and over again he would be sideline he would be the driver he would go pick up john sopers and go pick up the, and he did that with, with no complaints whatsoever and we watched because you got to understand i started preaching at the age of 7 so i i have like few decades of observing things that happened around in the church and i watched and i watched and i watched and i watched two decades later all these firecrackers and great ministers they got this church and this guy got that church and this guy got is doing that and everybody is famous and this guy is not famous like them and all of a sudden one day the senior pastor came and appointed him as the vice president of the entire organization <laughs> so guess what happened overnight he became the leader of all the brothers how was that that's called the grace and favor of the lord overnight so the grace that joseph has is a overnight grace <laughs> but the overnight is not overnight it's it's two decades long but when it comes it's an overnight breakthrough but it's not overnight look at your neighbor and say the overnight breakthrough is mostly not overnight can you tell that yeah no 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 you you're just warming up for me you i'm already in sixth gear you you're just in first gear turn to them and say the overnight breakthrough a little more stronger like you talk in your house when nobody is watching <laughs> is not overnight can you tell her yeah yeah sometimes it takes months years of crying valleys nobody sees that all people see is <gasps> all of a sudden he is the vice president of egypt and all the haters will start going to facebook and start bashing him but they don't know two decades of valleys that he's been promotion is not fair to the eyes of the brothers so personally i think i think the grace is doing the little so good that the bible promises that he if you're faithful in the little he will make you ruler of many so some of you are like yeah but but i've just just stayed there as a security as a greeter i'm standing nobody acknowledges me nobody knows me nobody knows me in the church nobody says hello to me nobody nobody you you feeling so lost you don't know what god is doing it's a test the word is testing you because you think the way promotion has to come is you know like the way they do in the secular world you get $100 increase then you get a $200 increase then you get a $500 increase then you get 800 then you get 850 and then you're like yes 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 i want to reach 1000 lord jesus please then you get 900 then 950 then that's the world am i right but not in the kingdom in the kingdom the promotion the way it happens is you go from hades to the highest place in heaven but that 
that's the fact i want you to know about my god you will be in a dun- do you know what a dungeon is what is a dungeon it's not a prison joseph was in a dungeon there's a difference between a prison and a dungeon prison you you're in jail but dungeon is like a dark place it's like a pit so he was not even in a jail he was not even in a normal prison he was in a deep pit dungeon dark place so can you imagine all of a sudden from the dark place from being underground he now became the vice president of egypt that's your god listen what what does the bible say about those that know their god those that know their god will do what will do what not not be, become faithful members of a church and you will put faithfully your offerings and you'll clap turn around three times and then go back home and repeat it for the next 365 days no 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 that's not what the bible says the bible says those who know their god will do what yes, holy spirit we love you so i just told you a, a way that god works faithfulness many people are rooted but they are rooted but bitter they're like i am i'm here i'm here but you have to watch the words that come out of them they are angry they are upset they are bitter they are disappointed they the enemy has hijacked their mind but rooted is not enough god wants you to be a joyful believer yes some people are great givers but they're not cheerful givers oh, like oh i think i'm a bit oh i don't know what's going to happen ah so you're putting a seed but as you're putting a seed you're canceling your seed with your words Eesh. <sighs> let that break today in jesus name so okay okay i have seen some people very anointed but with very less influence but i have seen others in comparison their anointing may be little but i have seen god grant them greater influence and their anointing is reaching much 10 times more than the guy the brother who was more anointed so gifting pastor gifting does not necessarily mean you're better than me so why should i want to become like you because gifting doesn't mean that you're better than me joseph was more gifted than all the brothers but he was in the pit there is a grace and wisdom that you may not be as gifted but you're alive yeah yeah because the church you know the way they have studied joseph is a very it's through a narrow perspective you know they're trying to justify god so the whole theory and theology around it is very uh, anyways i'll leave that alone so why should i want to become like you knowing that you can be very gifted and you're suffering how many of you want to suffer you can be very gifted and not have the wisdom and end up suffering whereas there are some people who are not as gifted as you but they have more influence and more productivity and more fruit so in giftedness don't forget to become more mature you saying that we saw the word of god work out well so when we went to egypt and egypt god used him to produce food from egypt and it saved the israelites so it's a happy ending that we hear in the word of god that we are saying wow it worked out for good but are you saying that was the plan of god that god would use egypt how do we conclude that we conclude that now because we know the end we know after it happened we didn't know it before but now we know the end so we say it was the plan of god wait a minute that is your perspective that is your perspective but was it egypt that god used because what actually happened there was a famine all over the world including egypt meaning if joseph was not there 
Egypt would look like any other broke country in the world. That means there was no hope in Egypt. But how did Egypt become the place where God would use to feed Israelites because Joseph landed there? If Joseph didn't land there, let's say Joseph landed in the Midianites. The story we would have heard today was God used Midianites to feed Israelites. You understand? So we cannot look at something and conclude that that was the will of God because it ended well. Because just because it ends well does not mean that's how it was intended to. That just means that you are a product of grace and mercy. You were created to have dominion and not to be a a victim. When your spirit begins to grow, you don't allow anything and everything to happen to you. Okay, I'm, it's a vast topic. What I'm sharing is a big topic, but I'm, I'm putting it in a, in a capsule format. There are not too many options for a child of God that is carried by spirit. Between being an Elijah on top of the Mount Carmel alone by himself, and being like Herod, who loved having parties with his friends. There are not too many options for a child of God. You are either alone on the Mount Carmel praying like Elijah, or you are like King Herod, who is all the time partying with friends and loving the world. Lukewarm is not an option, because the Bible says, if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out. So there's no too many options. You are either ready to soar like eagle. We thank God for grace. So going back to Joseph, going back to Jacob, going back to Isaac, the fact that for for good 20 years he didn't have a child. 20 years. Brother, 20 years Isaac didn't have a child. You have to find out what was, the, what was the reason. You see, we don't like to do this. We don't like to investigate. It's like, oh, I said didn't have a child for 20 years. You're a son of Abraham. Abraham's only begotten son. And 20 years he didn't have a seed. He's not bearing fruit in his life. And you don't think that there was a reason? Don't blame it on God and the devil all the time. Research. So you tell me, as a child of God, you need to know, why did Isaac not have a child for 20 years? The answer is in the next verse. The Bible says, Isaac prayed. And then his wife became pregnant. So the question was, 20 years, brother, why didn't you pray? So you see what I'm saying? There is a cause behind every suffering. You have to locate that cause. Because the Bible says, a curse cannot land without a cause. So how did it land on me? You have to locate it. So in terms of Joseph's life, we cannot assume that the sufferings he went through was God saying, I need him to fall into the pit. I need him to go to Egypt and suffer in the... No, 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 no. I don't think it was God sitting and dictating it. Wisdom. God gave him wisdom to choose and do things that would cause his life to either go left or go right. But as long he still remained under the hand of God, his lack of maturity did not take him away from his destiny. It just caused more suffering. Wisdom would determine Joseph whether he would take left or right. But of course, it didn't take him away from his destiny. But he decided if he will reach that place of destiny with more sufferings or less sufferings. That's the difference. We all are going to get to the heaven. We are all going to get to heaven. But the question is, how much suffering are you willing to sign up for? So you imagine you go to a church where they believe you need to suffer. All the best for you, brother. All the best. Life is already difficult. Now your pastor is blessing you from the stage saying that we have to suffer. We will pray for you. Because the power of words that is coming from the altar that you are connected to is very critical. Not enough that the devil is fighting you. Words of curses are coming from the stage to your house and now you're adding to your suffering in life 
now it's like a seal from heaven on that suffering no no perpetual suffering is demonic i want to declare this over you perpetual struggles is not from god you may struggle you may have trials but this day this morning by listening to this word that is coming to you we break perpetual shame perpetual suffering in the name of jesus so in the case of joseph i can show you at least 20 mistakes he made that cost his destiny go south that cost his destiny go through hard terrains did not god give israelites an option to reach the promised land in 10 days or 40 years he gave them option the first option was 10 days he said there is a shortcut i can take you through a shortcut so every believer remember you can reach your destiny in 10 days or you can be few years it's a choice you make do you hear what i'm saying it's a choice you make hare mana it's a choice you make it's a choice you make i feel the anointing may your sufferings be cut short in jesus name so i stand here and i declare forgiveness to some people in jesus name yes in the past there was ignorance that brought sufferings to you but in the name of jesus we cancel that in jesus name